We now welcome Fairview to the worship with us. <clears throat> Sometimes in our rush towards the cross, we overlook the poignancy of the story we, as told in the passage from John this morning. We know that powerful people are out to get Jesus. We know that Jesus faces a certain death, and he knows it too. But his disciples clearly don't get it. I'm sure it must have been a very difficult and very lonely time for Jesus during, during all of this. Then there is Mary. Mary gets it. She's seen her brother Lazarus die, and she's seen Jesus share her grief, and she knows what he faces. So she does something extraordinary. She does something kind for Jesus. Probably the, most, the only kind thing anybody ever does for him. Instead of asking Jesus for something, she gives Jesus of herself. There is a lot to consider in her actions that is dramatic. The extravagance of the gift, the fragrance of the perfume, the radical intimacy of the gesture. Let's pause for a moment. When I was in my early 20s and looking for a church that I would feel comfortable attending, a place I could clearly understand what the minister was saying in plain English, I stumbled across the United Church in Hawkesbury and Reverend Donald Walkenschwantz, who was the minister at the time. It was exactly the fifth Sunday of Lent with the same scripture passages we are using today. Reverend Donald was talking about Mary and how what she was doing by washing Jesus' feet was sexy. Not intimate, but downright sexy. He had this way about him, and I found, for me, he was easy to understand. But you can imagine, just like this morning, there were a few, oh my, and sort of, oh, from the statement that he made. That might have been for some, but for me, it sucked me right in at exactly the right time in my life. I don't think I would describe this passage in the same way. But I would say it was definitely done out of love and out of kindness. Mary washed Jesus' feet with expensive ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. She didn't consider the cost of the ointment or what could be done with the money it would bring. She simply washed Jesus' feet out of love and kindness. Let's think about the theological symbolism in her act. One. She is preparing him for burial. Two, she is accepting the cross. And three, she is honoring him as the ruler of her heart. Historically, anointing has rich associations with healing, with baptism, and with prophetic charge. So I would say that her act of love and kindness is pretty loaded. And maybe what's most remarkable is just that. She did it out of love and kindness. And it is this passage and Reverend Donald's explanation of it that gets me thinking. Maybe, just maybe, faith is not as complicated as we might think, but instead is simply about being loving and kind. Maybe the fragrance of love and kindness filled the house where Jesus was. Mary's act might serve as a bit of foreshadowing of the cross to come, but it, it is also a gift that shapes Jesus' ministry. We find him a few days later as he gathers his disciples for the Passover, and he does what he has learned from Mary. He washes their feet. Love and kindness received becomes love and kindness given. Today's scripture lesson would not have played out any other way, as it was God's plan in motion, preparing Jesus for what was to come. Mary didn't need to save the perfume and try to make it last longer. She used it because she had it and wanted to share it, and in doing so, fulfilled God's plan. 
Have you ever bought something? Then, because it was expensive or fragile, you put it away for a more appropriate time or that rainy day, but that more appropriate time or rainy day never comes? I have. Then years later, you discover that item in the exact packaging, unopened, and wonder why you never used it? Mm-hmm. I remember when I was leading worship many years ago in my home church in eastern Ontario and speaking to the children during children's time. But I was really addressing the adults about the importance of allowing children to use the things that are important to their parents, but that they, the children, are never allowed to use or touch. I had set up several crystal goblets with apple juice in them and snacks on fancy little plates. Oh, you could see the fear in the parents' faces as I invited the children to come forward to have some juice and a snack. But what those parents couldn't see was the joy, the excitement, and the surprise in the children's faces at being invited to the front and to be allowed to drink from these fancy glasses and eat snacks from the fancy little plates. I told them it didn't matter if they dropped a goblet or if something broke so long as no one got hurt. What did matter was the joy that they felt and showed in being given the chance to experience something out of their normal. Things that would normally be put out of their reach or hidden away for a more appropriate time were now in front of them and they were being invited to use them. How often do we say, oh, I'll just put that away for a rainy day, or you have your mother's fine china tucked away and only use it on special occasions. And when you do take that fine china out of the cupboard for that special occasion, are you more likely to tell people to, well, be careful, we don't want to break anything, and quickly clean it up immediately following the meal and put it away again? instead of just enjoying the company and conversation being had around the table and that locked up fine china. It was never God's plan for Mary to preserve the perfume for another time and maybe to never use it for fear of running out or to sell it to get more money. Mary put God's plan in motion just the way it should have been. And we can learn from this too. God used Mary's gesture to show Jesus love and kindness, to prepare Jesus for the dark time quickly approaching. But God wasn't just preparing Jesus. I believe God was preparing the disciples and continues to prepare us all. We will all have dark times in our lives that are difficult to face, whether we want them or not, but it is how we prepare for those times and how we conduct ourselves during these times with love and kindness that will get us through. It's okay to allow the children to occasionally use the good silver or the crystal glass. It's okay for us to occasionally buy the expensive hand cream or perfume or use grandma's fine china every day. It's okay to love ourselves to love who we are, to be kind to ourselves, as well it is, as it is okay for us to love others and to be kind to all. Love and kindness received becomes love and kindness given. If we remember anything about this passage and Mary's actions, maybe it should be just that. Let us pray. Lord God, how extravagant your love for us is. You continually pour upon us blessing upon blessing in the lives of people near and dear to us, in the beauty of creation, in the skills and abilities you have given to us. There is so much for which we are thankful. Yet in the midst of this thankfulness, there lurks the demons of demand and confusion. We want you to be in control of taking care of all the things that threaten us. We want you to prevent us from facing times of confusion and doubt. 
we want to have a more complete faith. Like Judas, who misunderstood Jesus' intention, we wonder about the anointing of Jesus, about the perceived waste of materials, how hard it is it is for us to see that we do not need to take some time that we need to take some time to honor and praise Christ instead of continually asking for Christ to do things for us. We have a lot to learn, Lord. Open our hard hearts to the healing words you have for us. Give us patience and persistence in our service to you. And when we stumble and thrash around faithlessly, or put things away for that rainy day that never comes, bring us back to your presence, that we may find healing and hope, kindness and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>